Great. Well, welcome to Northern Powerhouses, our business success stories series. Today we, we have with us Mike Davis of Brilliant. So welcome, Mike. And if you'd be kind of firstly to introduce yourself, what you do and how you help your clients, that would be great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thanks. Um, so um, I'm Mike Davis. I'm the managing director of Brilliant Agency. Uh, Brilliant Agency is a full service marketing uh, agency. We specialize in working with food and drink brands. Um, it's the type of companies that you usually see on the supermarket shelves, really. Um, so we do a full, full mix of both digital and traditional uh, marketing services as well as brand development. Um, and yeah, we really um, <clears throat> sort of kind of focus in in what is a fairly um, competitive space in the marketing space. We focus in on a niche of food and drink brands really to be a specialist. Um, the company vision really is to be the go-to uh, agency for food and drink brands. And in a real world scenario, you kind of imagine that as thinking when a food and drink company says, right, we need to do some marketing or we need to rebrand a product. They say we need to speak to Brilliant. So we know we've succeeded in our vision um, and our mission if, uh, if that is the case. And I think we're well on the way there uh, to doing that. So, yeah. Brilliant. And you've got some great brands. I, I, I personally worked uh, quite a long time ago, probably 12, 13 years ago, with the guys at Shepherd's Purse Cheeses with Judy and at the time yep. Katie. And I know Caroline is, uh, is sort of heading the ship now. But uh, that, that's yes. an amazing success story for a local family business. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah. There's there's some fantastic brands, and we're really fortunate to be kind of part of some of the journeys for these companies, um, both big and small, really. And um, as I mentioned, we do work with with predominantly larger brands, but we have we have worked with startup brands and helped them, you know, right from the inception um, of their of their concept and their product. And it's it's great for us to be able to see the growth that we we are kind of part of and help them achieve. Um, I think the longest standing client we've worked with now is coming up to about eight years um, from when they were pretty much making their product in the, in the garage in their house now to be <laughs> um, managing international sort of marketing campaigns for them and seeing them you know in every sort of major retailer that you pop into is, is fantastic. That's uh, yeah that's wonderful I can imagine that must be quite um, inspiringly engaging to go for that whole journey and process. And yeah yeah it's, it's, it's fantastic to see. I think it's, it's, you know, it's proof that, you know, hard work and determination and a great product will, you know, <clears throat> it can achieve great things really. And it's, it's fantastic for our team to, to see the impact that they make, you know, there's yeah. nothing better than um, to inspire your team to see a positive impact and see the fruits of their labors, you know, um, especially when they're, when they're out and about outside of work and they can see something go, well, actually, you know, I've been part of helping this product get to where it is now. It's Absolutely, yeah, that must be quite. That must be quite. So, fully enough, I say we worked with Shepherd's Purse a long time ago, and now we work with a cheese and wine retailer. So, it's it's quite a, a connection through. So, um, I guess looking at business, and 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 one of the purpose of the the interview today is looking back over the last eight to nine months. What, how has the outbreak and lockdown affected you guys? Mm. Well, it was. It's it's been very challenging. Um, it's been very hard uh, on our sort of senior leadership and management team. It's been very hard on the staff, um, and it's been yeah. very hard on clients, and obviously on, on on the customers that we help our, our clients sell to. So I think all in all, I think everyone's aware that it's it's been massively challenging. Um, I mean, we when it when lockdown was when it was kind of on on the cards, really what we did as an organization is we kind of looked at what we were doing. We kind of tried to make a few assumptions about how this may roll out. Um, yeah. You know, business thrives on, on, <clears throat> on the certainty of or, or a certain amount of certainty in the future. And there was none. Yeah. So we thought <clears throat> we kind of had a two pronged uh, approach to our strategy to get us through lockdown and, and through the last, what's going to be coming up to about 12 months soon. Yeah. Um, and that looked at a what do we need to do to keep our clients, and b what do we do need do to need to keep our team and uh, our company going. So first of all, with our clients, we said right, well, what do they want? They're gonna because marketing is is notoriously one of the things that's cut in times of uncertainty and, and when, when finances are a challenge. Um, and I'm glad to say that through this whole period, we didn't lose a single client. Right. Um, 
Some did cut back, but what we said is we initially put together a, an action plan, which we sent out individually to each one of our clients. And we said, this is what we see is going to happen. Um, this is what we are going to do about it. Um, and this is how we're going to help and support you through it. Now, we were, we were fortunate to have a think about what it meant for people being in lockdown. We thought, well, they're going to want to be, um, a lot of people are going to be going online. More people are going to be going online because they're going to be at home or furloughed. So what does that mean for advertisers? It means there's going to be more inventory available for them to advertise. It's going to bring down costs. Also, what's going to compound that is the fact that um, a lot of businesses are worried about their finances. They're going to scale back from advertising. So advertising is actually going to be in a great place if you're yep. willing to kind of jump in the deep end and go for it and be a bit um, <clears throat> be less cautious about it. So we said that's an insight we could give to our clients. We also knew that and we could see that people were already going out and doing things like uh, bulk buying. Now, that's massively negative as a, for a, from a social perspective, but from a business, it meant that there was there was yes. product was moving quickly off the shelves. So we were able to say to our clients, look, you know, a lot of people are going to be online and there's going to be cheaper, more available advertising inventory. You should put more into ads. So we were able to give our clients a level of certainty. Um, and a forecast for where we felt things were going. That was received really well. And, and we had clients pushing budget, pushing more budget in, looking at more work. So that was really good because they got a sense of, you know, certainty from that and a bit of kind of insight about where things were going to go. Um, and it meant that we could keep our, our clients on board. And we said, this is what we're going to do as an organization. We're going into lockdown. We're capable of working remotely very effectively. We do work in that way anyway, yeah. um, to a certain extent. So that was kind of how we kept all our clients on board and helped even scale up some of the aspects. Now we knew we had um, certain parts of our service offering were not going to be required. So they were, they were cut and we did lose um, a fairly considerable amount of revenue from things like our more traditional advertising um, and work that just wasn't required. You know, there's no point in putting billboards up and more um, digital out of home advertising because no one was really going out. So that was, yes. we lost all of that work. Or we, it was deferred essentially because most yeah. of it's come back now. Um, and then what we said about the business, our second pillar um, or in our pronged approach was we said, well, this will end. We know we will get, you know, this will this will end at some point. We don't know when, we don't know how bad it's going to be, but it will end. So what can we do? So we had a kind of, <clears throat> we looked at our offering and we looked at all the things that were nice things, good things to have, but really weren't fundamental business requirements. And we stripped all of those costs out. Um, and we were able to sort of kind of consolidate the, the company um, so that we could operate really on a skeleton um, sort of cost basis, really. Um, unfortunately, we did end up losing a couple of staff um, who went on to furlough and then ultimately uh, lost their, their positions here because that work, as I mentioned, wasn't here, yes. um, the more traditional side of things. So that was very sad um, and really not what we wanted to do. But in the end, we were able to keep the vast majority of our team on board um, within the company, keep everything else, keep all of our suppliers pretty much on board um, and kind of hunkered down. And from that, we were actually able to save a decent bit of money because I knew that when we when things started to get going again, there'd be a lot of opportunity. Business is generally <laughs> optimistic. People want to get back. They want yep. to, you know, when they're when when we're sort of re restrained as business owners, you generally feel like you want to get going again. You want to get cracking yep. again. And I knew that that was going to be the case. So we said, well, what we'll do is we'll we'll try and save, keep keep our money, keep our cash reserves good. And when this starts to ease up, we'll put a lot of money back into advertising again, knowing that advertising is going digital advertising anyway anyways is in a good place so we did that and as we started to see things kind of as lockdowns eased and everything we just put a lot of money invested straight back into the company to win new work and we've um off the back of that we've won a, an enormous amount of new business um we've been able to recruit replace the roles that we've lost and we now have a bigger team than we had going into lockdown and more really? clients we're doing more revenue so you know i think that strategy worked it was put you know clients and, and their customers first and thinking about how we can keep the business and our team as secure as as, as, as possible um and just kind of almost hibernate through lockdown until we can yeah. come up and come out all guns blazing um and that's the strategy that's that's we've we've employed and, and it seems to have worked thankfully um mm -hmm. 
as, as with any strategy, it's never guaranteed, but you know, that's what we felt was the right approach and it seems to have worked. It's, no, it's, it's great. And it, it, it's a really great point. It's, it's for, for us, we, we've said to a lot of our clients and people we work with is, you know, if you've got the capability, in effect, everything's up for sale at the moment, both businesses, because some businesses will struggle and they'll, they'll be open to maybe mergers and acquisitions, but also clients, because if they're not being serviced either physically or by the marketing and that customer care element of, of what we do, they're going to be looking potentially or potentially open to moving mm. moving. So the investment and, and the third thing with, with, you know, very similar to what you said is, uh, the, the marketing pound right there is, or has been worth way more because a lot of people aren't. So we have a bigger impact because fewer pe- people are playing or have been playing. So, yeah. I, I, you know, it, it's great that you've been, you know, we've said similar things to our clients is if you can, then investing right now is going to give you a way better return than it would have done in the normal environment. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the, I, I love there's, a, there's a, apparently one of the Chinese dialects, one of the symbol for problem has two parts. One is challenge and one is opportunity. And, and I think that's the key thing is, is how to choose to look at something like this. It's obviously a challenge for many of us, but it's also potentially an opportunity. Wow. So that's uh, that, that's great. So you're now bigger than you were when you went into lockdown. So that's um, what yeah, we're doing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we've got a, a, a larger staff count and um, revenues are pretty much yeah are there or thereabouts, albeit profit, not so much because we're investing so much in growth. Um, well but yeah, we're, 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 in a, we're in a great place and we've, Amazingly, where we lost 50% of our revenue through that first lockdown month on month, we were losing an enormous amount of, uh, of income. Um, we've even got to the point where we've been able to push that back um, and get to the point where our yearly targets, which when we went into lockdown, we just completely scrapped all our financial targets. Yes. We were opening another office in London. That was completely offered, written off. Um, all of our targets written off. They were now in, I think it was around August time. We said, no, actually, let's, let's put those, let's reinstate all of those targets. Um, obviously, the, the office in London is, is off the cards because that's not what business is. is it's not, it doesn't make sense at the moment with how business is. But yeah, we've been able to put, um, put everything back in place and we'll, we'll exceed our, our financials this year, which is fantastic. Congratulations. That's, that, that's just great. What- what, what would you say some of the key adaptations you've had to make that, you know, working differently, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's, there's <clears throat> adaptations are really, I mean, we're, we're again, we're, we're fortunate. And I, I do know that our story is, we're, we're, I'm very grateful because we have been very fortunate in the nature of our business, um, as I mentioned at the start and how we work and it's very digital based. It's all laptops. It can be remote. Yeah. As long as we've got, you know, a VPN set up, you can get on all of our um sort of infrastructure but what 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 have we done really the first thing was making sure to try that everyone had what they needed um in terms of the team trying to work remotely so that was kind of like picking up all physically picking up all the gear and taking everything that they've got so you know the obviously their laptops and all the uh, it equipment that they need (laughs) and then trying to put in place things that um that that focus on the staff's well-being. I think we were probably, as an organisation, caught a little bit off guard um, in terms of how we how we were able to support the team, as I think most businesses were. Um, and we adapted. Eventually, we, we kind of got round to thinking, actually, well, we need to do we need we need to do more. As a business, we're very much focused on our team's well-being. Um, and when you look at our website, that's kind of one of our big yes. uh, values. Um, but I think we kind of we we misinterpreted how how challenging it was going to be for people, and I know there was a lot of focus on well-being. But we kind of went, okay, well, what are we going to do? We so we adapted by putting our team into little groups, little sort of bubbles, where of kind of like three or four people who didn't work in the same department, so they would be people that they didn't speak to on their yeah. business, you know, yeah. today, so they couldn't just pick up the call and be like, oh, what are you doing on this project? What's going on? So it's like trying to separate people out and just give them a focus and bring them together and give them an opportunity to spend some time during the working day, just to kind of, you know, chew the cud, just, just, just kind of chat about stuff that wasn't to do with business, you know, and just to catch up with people. So that was one of those, one of the things where we initially, we siphoned off some time every week and said, no, that's, that's company time, but do what you want, catch up with these people and look after each other. So that was a, that was something that we had to change. Um, from the team's perspective, which was which was a really good thing, and it's, it's probably something we'll try and keep going. 
yep. uh, now that we're coming out of lockdown. Um, and, and just trying to be trying to make sure the communications were, were, were key. So obviously we transitioned to a lot of, of this type of uh, communication, video conferencing. We can do we still do most of our uh, calls like this, as I'm sure pretty much yeah. most businesses are. Um, so that was a, that was a pretty obvious transition um, in terms of the business itself as well. We really kind of skewed the focus on the work that we knew was there. As I mentioned, we, we did lose a bit of uh, or deferred a bit of the campaign work, which was more traditional marketing, yeah. which isn't effective at the moment. Um, so we really focused our service offering in other areas that we knew were, you know, yeah. were going uh, required so we put more into into digital uh, um, into that side of things um, focus more on creative department scaling that up on the brand work that we do scaling that up because we know as people are kind of sat there at home twiddling their thumbs maybe burloughed there's a lot of creativity that comes on and a lot of people think yes. hey, what can I do what what can we do and a lot of our existing clients as well give them a chance to think well is this the best model that we're operating or what do we think about this so we're really, really kind of focused in on trying to support our clients and making sure that they there was a bit of sort of creativity going on and a bit of something a little bit different that could help them kind of keep them active uh, and their kind of aspirations and also keep new new work coming into us as a company. So we just kind of are kind of focusing our service offering. Um, which again, we're, we're very fortunate to be able to do. We can kind of move as, as, as the kind of, as things go to, to tip the scales in a different direction, which, which we're fortunate to be able to do so. Yeah, but it's it's although it's been a massive upheaval, it's not been majorly transformative in terms of of, of how the business runs. It's we're, we're we're really fortunate we can we can be you know quite effective in a multitude of different sort of setups, which is yeah. which is interesting for a business. So yeah, it's, and important. It's great, it's, it's great to that flexibility. You know, mm. and, and say that the, the conscious effort to see what, what how we need to change. I, I funny enough, I had my first first business meeting back in Leeds yesterday for well pretty yeah. much never. and it's just still Leeds I know I've got friends all still working in Leeds it really is just empty and it was just yeah. you, know, you say the whole physical marketing of billboards and things it would be totally pointless mm -hmm. to, to, to have yeah. those out at the moment because nobody is, you know is yeah working. people aren't traveling anywhere near as much as they were and it's 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 really sad for the um you know, for the city centres and the town centres yes. um, <clears throat> there's gonna there'll be I'm sure there's gonna be sort of a focus on on, on trying to help people get back safely um, yeah. to a certain extent. And I think that's one of the things about working from home. I think that there's, there's yes, it's great to have the flexibility and we, we always have, have we've wanted to, uh, our team to have flexibility to be able to work from home and have a bit more flexibility in their hours and things. But I think there's also a responsibility we all have to help the businesses and the infrastructure that's being set up um, yeah. to, keep, to keep things ticking over to a certain extent, um, as long as it can be done safely. So... It's a, it's a massive challenge that probably I'm, I'm I'm probably not smart enough to comment on really, <laughs> but yeah, we do see it. It's sad. We're we're pretty much in the city centre and it is quiet. You know, it is quiet. Yeah, it, it 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 is as you say. It is sad. It, it it's it's so different as well, isn't it? It's almost um, it it mm -hmm. it's fascinating really. It's fascinating to see how much business is being done because business is still being done without the need to to come into a city centre. And I guess. You know, we may be seeing a significant sort of social change and, and, and commercial change over time. And, and you know, change is what, it, what we choose it to be. I guess there's going to be a lot of positives out of it. Um, I, you know, I personally think things like high streets and city centres will become more um, social and entertainment centres um, mm. because, you know, you know, so let's go there and do some fun stuff. We still do that or have done that, but it's still dominated probably more by the, the commerce side um, and, and, and obviously the retail side, but I think maybe there'll be a move and a shift and that might be to, you know, to everyone's benefit, let's hope. Yeah. So you, you mentioned, obviously, team's grown and, and you're reverting back to your to, to, to pre-COVID um, targets and things. What is, mm -hmm. it, that's winning itself, but are there any other key wins that you've seen that, you you know, be great to celebrate? Um, I think... Um... It's been, I guess, one of the one of the wins is seeing how the team have adapted and how the team looked after yeah. each other and how they've supported each other. Um, you know, we 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 really try and focus on on on, on well being here, and we had our, our whole sort of benefits packages focused around well being. But it's been great to see how just the team have kind of pulled together and just kind of helped each other through. 
I mean, that is just a win in itself. It, and it comes down to culture, I think. And it comes down to that, that belief in, in, in doing the right thing um, that's kind of embedded in, in, our, in our organization. But I think that has been a win. It's great to be able to see that happening to the, the, you know, the team to be running and operating and being efficient and effective and being supportive and, and being, you know, empathetic to the, the people around them um, and still trying to do, do the absolute best they can. I mean, it's, it's been an immensely challenging time, especially, you know, for, well, for everyone, no matter what their, their, their personal scenario, the situation. But I think that has been a win for us because it kind of proves that the, the quality of the people that we've got here um yeah. so I'm, I'm i'm really grateful to see that um I, I think it's just you know it's great because the team is what makes our company we're a service business people buy from us because they love yes they see the, the hopefully the great work that we do but then they, they stay and stick around because of the team and i think that has kind of permeated through everything over the last few you know few months and so that is a win for us to know that we've we've built a really great team yeah. um in terms of in terms of other wins as well i think it's nice to be able to know that we've we've got through financially as an organization we've got through this period and we've been able to put back in place all of our team incentives so we do like a, a monthly kind of bonus we have a, we've been able to reinstate the financial bonus at the, the end of the year if we hit profit target um and, and things like that to be able to give give a little back and be able to just kind of get the the resources that the team need to be able to not feel like every pound that's spent is a kind of, you know, oof, shouldn't really be spending that. So that's, that is, that is a win, I guess, which, which does come to, back to the financials, but it rolls out into how, how we operate the business and how we want to operate the business. We've not been kind of, <clears throat> kind of chained down by this thing. We can go, okay, well, we can still elevate people. We've had a couple of people be promoted within the company. As I mentioned, the, the monthly bonus system has come back in. Um, so that is, yeah, that's a big win for us because it's really important. It's really important for morale. Yeah. It's really important for us to be able to celebrate the effectiveness and the hard work that our team do. And without that, you know, they're still, everyone's still, you know, optimistic and passionate, but it's just a little way that we can say, well, thank you, you know, as a yeah. company, we can say thank you to them for working so hard and, and doing great work. So yeah, that, those, those would be a couple of wins I'd definitely say. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And, and what um, what adjustments that you maybe you're going to keep on when, when we get back mm. to whatever new normal looks like? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think they'll, they'll, by nature, there'll be a certain amount of working from home. Um, yeah. That's that, that's just the kind of part and parcel. Um, I think, and, the, and a bit more flexibility. We, we did have... Um, a bit of a, a, an approach to sort of flexible working and people if they wanted to work part-time um trying to work out how we can let people do that to fit in with their their, their personal lives yep. so i think all of that side of thing this has just reinforced it that actually the nine to five it it's it's not required yes there's always going to be clients who want a nine at nine a.m meeting or want to yep. the phone to you you know 5 20 29 uh for an hour call but it's it's not it's, it doesn't have to be permanent there, there can be a lot more flexibility and, and we should be really way more agile and, and the approach to how we do things should be a lot more um flexible so i think that i think this has taught us that you know yes then has to be some time in the office 100 and i'm i do believe that we will we'll, we're not going to get rid of our office space you know i'm very grateful for our landlords here um, we have a great, great space, and I think it helps build on the culture. And we need to maintain that. Yep. Will everyone have to be in five days a week? No, not at all. Um, there'll have to be certain key times when they do come in. Um, yes. So I think that that whole flexibility to to to, to kind of work um, has has been has been important, and also probably for myself as well. I think um, knowing that it's not like I don't have to be here for every single hour of the day <laughs> perfectly capable of actually like the team running things very effectively and i think if anything i've i've kind of been able to take a, a massive step back and this really? is kind of shown me that we've you know with the investment we're making in the team and growing it that yes i'm required for certain things but not what perhaps i think i i am <laughs> so perhaps a big realization for myself that it's not the be all the end of all to work every hour um god's given us so yeah i think um really those are probably the things we're going to roll over and just be a bit more relaxed about the whole thing you know um really obviously we're a very professional and, and kind of um focused 
company with with you know with big aspirations but you know that it's it's if anything this kind of it's this is shown like how adversity we can we can thrive and we can we can if as long as we take the right approach and we don't you know we take our work seriously but we don't take ourselves too seriously yeah. good oh it's great it's probably it's, it, learning it, no it's great it, it, yeah we i mean one of the things we we, we work with clients on is is the definition of business for us is a commercial profitable enterprise that can work without its owners um because that's then it becomes a business and to do that obviously the other part the other part of that is stop we, we we help people stop being superheroes and start recruiting retaining and rewarding superheroes it's like it, it's mm. we tend to put ourselves to the forefront understandably because we need to be right at the start because you know our businesses yeah. are founded are founded typically on us and one or two key people so yeah. you know that whole um sort of mentality of, of the harder i work the more the more success we get is absolutely mm. correct for a certain period but once we get to to, to, to a point where um we're at yeah. that limit absolutely i think i think that's it you kind of realize that you end up you actually probably hold it back when you get to a certain point don't you yes. yeah and there's, there's people in there with with, with better thoughts and um, um, a more creativity and, and, and a more drive and passion that aren't caught up in the uh yep. the myriad of experience that you think is, is vital to being successful and actually <laughs> probably is, 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 is holding you back um <clears throat> which i think is really fa really fascinating and interesting and that's yeah that's been a big learning you know the guiding and is probably better than kind of instructing a lot of the time and kind of being like okay well let's let's let's, let's see what everyone else else can do so yeah so yeah no, it's, it's it's good i think that's a, it's a good it's package. great yeah. it's a different set of skills to learn i mean it's as we as we progress in, in our in our sort mm. of business ownership entrepreneurial career it goes from doing it to to to, to, to being the leader of people to do it and that yes. that change comes easy to some and, and harder to others and that you know that's life mm. You know, that, yeah. same same with anything. Really. That, that's cool. Yeah. So, is, is there anything going back to sort of March the twentieth or twenty first or whatever it was? Is there anything you would have done sooner in hindsight? Hindsight being a wonderful thing, you know. But uh, yeah. Well, I was I was on holiday at the time. Um, oh, I would have stayed on holiday for the rest of the year. <laughs> oh, I <see. laughs> yeah i would have stayed on holiday if i'd known it was going to be like this no would i have done anything different yeah I, I, absolutely um i think i would have I, I think we went in too keen on things like the kind of catching up and the infrastructure to keep to to see how everything was going we were really keen like okay so we've got people updating at the start and end of the day, we've got three calls throughout the day. And I think it was just way too over the top and it was way too focused on operations rather than uh, sort of just, just general well-being. I mean, as yeah. I said, you know, our team is, is, is fantastic. They work very hard and they're very talented. And I think we just put, put too much focus on kind of just checking that everything was getting done. Um, which, it, which you can argue is, is the right thing to do at the start, but I think we just focus too much on that and not enough just on generally just kind of going, okay, guys, like let's let's just see how this works out. Yeah. Let's let's let it happen for a little bit and then learn rather than being like, okay, we can put in the perfect system and this or this is how it will work, um, because you kind of we kind of get you get chained to that process. Whereas you know the second lockdown, we were just kind of like, okay, cool, we, we know what we're doing. Let's just, let's just work like we're in the office. You know, yeah. we'll do the we'll do the more the Monday morning sort of management meeting and then full company meeting um, as usual. But the rest of the time, let's let people go. They'll 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 communicate as effectively as they would do anyway. So, yeah, the the learning was that I think we went in way too systems focused at the start, way too yeah. kind of or, almost not too organized, but over the top, there was, there was yeah. too much admin almost to run the operation, which wasn't necessary. But again, that comes out of, that comes out of, uh, you know, <clears throat> a desire to do the right things to, you know, a desire to make sure everything runs seamlessly and we, we, we don't make any mistakes, but that's, that's just not, not possible. You know, going into something like that, that no one has an experience of how to yeah. do it. No one has any kind of, no one can give you the, the, the playbook on how to run a, an organization in that situation. 100%. You know, so yeah, we, 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 I definitely say to myself, just kind of, you know, just, just, you've got a great team. They, they can run it. Don't worry too much. Give them, give them learn, like have a bit of learning time. It's kind of like a bit of sort of testing up front rather than going full steam ahead. This is how we should do it. So but hindsight, you know. It's, hindsight's wonderful. But I, I am interested, what you've just said there, is that 
if we imagine there's another challenge, totally different to this one, is that the approach? And you know, are you more likely to take that approach of let's not try and you know get the system and structures? Let's will you will you take that approach again next time and, and, and use it as a learning? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I would actually, which kind of goes against probably what most of what I've always believed of a business. I've always believed you know things should be process driven, system orientated, you know, <clears throat> accountable. This is how you do it. Work it out. Optimize it improve it let the team run it work it and go like that and and yes that works for, for the majority of things but in in yeah if we were to go into something like this again it would be very very much kind of like okay guys let's just see how it goes you know we work what yeah. yes we're not in the office but in essence it's not changed let's see how it works let's see where the issues are and we'll work through those as they come up come about rather than trying to preempt it and solve issues that were never actually issues you know, I think that's what we, we ended up doing. But I think yeah. the, the, the probably it was kind of that initial approach that we took was sort of, it was exasperated by the uncertainty that all, that everyone had around us as well. I know um, it's that, that situation just won't, won't occur again because people know that the world didn't stop when we went into lockdown, which is what it almost felt like at the start. I was like, oh yeah. my God. What's going to happen, you know? And it felt like the world was ending in a way, but um, which probably sort of, yeah, kind of like I say, exasperated our approach to it and trying to make sure we covered them all the bases as, as as thoroughly as possible, which just really wasn't required. So yeah, I would um, I definitely take a much more relaxed sort of uh, approach to it, sort of lay safe fair, sort of let's see how it goes and <laughs> the guys run it. I, <laughs> so. don't, I don't think that's the case, Mike. I'm sure it's not a lesson. <laughs> But I think your point is really relevant. I think, you know, great businesses are based on great people using great systems, 100%. How we get to those systems, quite often it's useful to get it right and then systemize it as opposed to systemize it to be right, if that makes sense. Exactly. Yes, 100%. And, and, and it, it's okay to be a little bit, um, I mean, my background was actually software development going back a long time. And mm. obviously, and, and the structure then was very much you designed the hell out of it. You knew exactly how it was all going to be. Then you wrote it. And nowadays, it seems to be, you know, this idea of agile technology and stuff. You just make it up, and then you, you get it better, and, and it's working clearly. So it, it would be very alien to me, I have to be honest. But um, you know, it, it's yeah. okay. It's okay yeah. that things evolve and change, and that's that's that's, that's great. Absolutely, so, it's the nature of it, isn't it? Yeah. It, it? It absolutely is. It absolutely is. So. Um, Obviously, we had we had yesterday some wonderful news that that it starts to feel, as we said before we started, you know, it feels like the light at the end of the tunnel is is is, is burning a little bit brighter. Mm. Um, what what are you yeah. like, what are you most looking forward to on the other side of of, of what, whenever this finishes to some extent? Yeah, I mean, well, I guess the different different for the business and different for personally, but um, for the business, I I really want to get um to be able to have the team fully back in the office every now and again so there's really so people because we've got new people that have never met other people in the team other than you know through through a laptop um so i really want to just have a couple of things getting people to get together we we usually have like obviously like most people have a big christmas party and we have you know socials and stuff i want to be able to do those again but they, yep. you know the team need them we all need them um, so doing that, we also do, um, or we used to do like a monthly movement session at a gym where we go and it's kind of like um, a cross between kind of yoga and gymnastics in a weird sort of way, if you can imagine a group wow. of <clears throat> marketers all dressed up in their gym gear doing all this stuff, but it really kind of breaks down a load of barriers and gives people an opportunity just to, just to laugh at themselves and fall over. And we did that every month. Brilliant. Um, I want I want to do that again. You know, I want to have that um, in place. I want to be able to do more of the wellness stuff. We used to have people coming in every quarter to do a different uh, focus on well-being. We want to be able to do that again. So for the company, I, I really want that that because that's so core to our offering. With you know, so focused yep. on 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 well-being and people's kind of physical and mental uh, health. Um, want to do that? I want to go back and see some of our clients. You know, I want to have a proper meeting yes. with some of our clients. Um, <laughs> you know, doing 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 stuff like that is just it's it's, it's I I absolutely love it personally. It's it's kind of one of my favorite points, just you know, meeting people and just having conversations and understanding their businesses and seeing how they operate. You know, getting back into that. So th those are two things I just really want want to be back as soon as possible. Um, right. 
which which will which will come back with time. But you know, like you say, it's it's it's, it's how long? Maybe another year or so. But yeah, th those would be, be that. And then personally, I just want to be able to. Uh, I want my kids to see my grandparents. I want the kids to be able to go to um, see their friends play. And I want to be able to take the kids on holiday. You know, we used to. We, we, again, one of our big focuses for the family has always been to sort of educate them around different cultures and do a lot of traveling. Um, and we've always traveled barely regularly. Um, but obviously, the kids haven't. I've got, you know, my little boy is not. He's only been on a couple of, um, been away a couple of times, whereas his, his, his older sister's been all over the world. And it's kind of like, I want to, that to get back into play as soon as possible because it's so important for them to see that, you know, things are very different around the world. And, you know, we live in Leeds, yeah, and it's, it's, it's great and this is what it's like, but it's not like that, you know, in, all, in anywhere else in the world. So that's what I really want to do and get them to see the family yeah. because, you know, they're missing out on their friends. So. Yeah, really. It, and it's funny, isn't it? It's, it? It is sort of the simple things in life. It's, it's, and, and I think this whole situation mm -hmm. made us realise that the simple things that we that often, you know, speaking person can take for granted are probably yeah. the most important things. And one hundred percent, I think that's a positive. I think many of us will take out of it is that actually we, we, mm -hmm. you know, firstly we're very lucky because I think, um, you know, this, this hasn't affected many of us as, as, as badly as we would have across the world but also in other parts of the country i i, I can't mm -hmm. i honestly can't imagine being locked up locked sorry locked down in um you know in a small flat with no ability to go outside um you know yeah and, and so you know it didn't affect the lockdown really didn't affect our ability to go for walks and do things that mm -hmm. we always did but i can i can totally imagine it must be horrible for people that couldn't so um, yeah so yeah what so what what have you what would you say you've learned about yourself over over this fairly challenging time? Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I think um like, yeah, I think resilience. Um I've always been a kind of <clears throat> a believer, rightly or wrongly, that you know I should be pushing myself as far as possible. And, and the more I push myself and the more discomfort I go through, that just becomes the norm. And then you can push yourself even further, um, rightly or wrongly. There may become a breaking point on that. Um, which so I think I always had that. I always had that approach. Um, but now, as I mentioned before, I don't need you know realizing that things work quite well without me. Um, <laughs> I don't need to do that, or I don't need to do it in this business as much. Um, has been a big realization. Um, you know. Um, so I think I've, I've learned that I don't, you know, I don't need to be absolutely crazy nonstop all the time. There, there is, there is, uh, right. you know, things don't fall apart if, you, if I take yep. my foot off the gas. Um, and actually, you can I can focus in other areas that can push things things forward. Um, so I think I, I think I've learned learned that really, and I think just a level of resilience as well, which I'm sure a lot of people yep. have learned because it has been hard. You know, it's been there's been some awful awful things gone on and as i mentioned before you know we've as a company we've never let anyone go because of the company's performance yeah. yes we've let people go because of their performance but never because of the companies the company has always been i believe sort of managed effectively it's always been profitable we've always been sort of our, our growth has always been managed and we've never kind of overreached and had to let people go because yeah. they lost work and things like that but this was the first time that we had to do that um, and it was through no fault of our own. And yeah. I think, you know, that was really kind of heartbreaking um, because, you know, I feel like when people come in, this is, we, we're trying to set people up with a, with a career and an opportunity to, to continue and grow, which is secure, you know, as long as they do, yeah. as long as they excel in their work and their, their, their values align with the companies and ours, then we're in a good place. So I think that was a real challenge for me and a real kind of learning because it, it, that was a hard thing to have to do, really, if I'm honest, yeah. you know, yeah. getting people to go through no fault of our own, yes. good people who've done nothing wrong. That was, that was really hard. So I guess learning that, you know, that's, it's, <clears throat> that, I, I don't know if what, if I particularly learned too much from that, but it was just a challenge to go through. Um, and I think, you know, it's kind of realizing that, there is, you know, it's, it's so much wider than just ourselves. And, and this, we've got to be so mindful about everyone and being focused on, on everyone else is, is still the fundamental, most important thing I think of running a business is how can you help everyone around you? Because if you do that, then everyone will, will help.
grow what you're trying to do. Brilliant. So yeah, I think it just reaffirmed that it wasn't a new learning, but it just reaffirmed that that it's it's so important to focus on the team and get the right people in and, and help them. Um, and and yeah, not be so so bloody. <laughs> kind of just on it do it do it get it done just just chill out i think to chill out that's probably a little bit of what i've learned <laughs> so yeah so that's um that's yeah i think that's probably what i've learned hopefully maybe uh, perhaps that that is needs i need to be a bit more retrospective um because i think i have answered that question badly which shows that i haven't thought about it enough <laughs> i would say uh, it's cool it's it's cool it's, it's it you know they, they, a there's no wrong, wrong answers anyway but um I, I mm. think you, you, I think your message is really powerful. Um, it, it's really interesting, actually, that um, one of the things that you didn't actually, uh, one of the things that sort of I would add to that, but not necessarily for you, but just in general, is that we work with a lot of entrepreneurial people, and entrepreneurial people typically are focused more on what they haven't achieved yet than what they have. Mm. And consequent, and and one of the things we 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 get people to do a lot is to celebrate on a regular basis, retrospectively, because. When it gets tough and it's got tough, part of resilience is being able to look at the wins. And if we haven't celebrated them, they seem to not exist. Mm, um, a, a, a friend of mine who's a, a public speaker, he, um, he, he, he speaks around the world. And he, he, he told me a long, uh, quite a while ago, the main speaker at a dinner in New Zealand was the, the only guy I think still that's, that's climbed Everest with two artificial limbs. Um, wow. And, yeah. you know, he, he, they're, they're having dinner because it was a, a bit of... A, and over dinner, he said, what did it feel like? You know, when you got to the top, what was the... And, and I remember, he's, I always remember he told me that the guy said, well, there was two, about two minutes of absolute euphoria. You know, you've done it, you, you will yeah. go down in history and all that. And then he said, what's next? And, and I sort of feel, you know, we need more than two minutes of euphoria when we achieve yes. even <laughs> a small win. We, you know, yeah. and, and, and that builds resilience to say, actually, when we look back and, and so I, I, sorry, I don't want to hijack your, your answer, but I think that that no. retrospection is, is really key just in general, not about not just the how, but what we've achieved and, and how great things, things have happened. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'd agree. And I think this is this is it. It's, it's often the one of our we often never really define what our measure of success is. Um, which is dangerous which is a dangerous place to live because then you just kind of keep going and keep going and keep going and um i think yeah. you you know you, you're right I, I was chatting with my wife yesterday and she said well you know why can't you you can't just keep it keep it like it is now it's in a good place the company you know i was like no 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 we've got to uh, we've got to keep growing we've got to keep getting there and she's like well, what, what 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 for Right. Okay, that's a good question. Um, you know, because yeah, really? well, I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer really. Um, and she's right, and it comes back to this, and this is a bit off piece, but obviously, um, there's, there's so much in the news about sustainability and the environment, and uh, um, and, the, and, the, and the massive challenges we're facing. Um, and I mentioned, but I, I have another business which is a. Um, it's essentially a product design agency which re-engineers consumer goods to be environmentally friendly and uh, sustainable and essentially the goal of that is to basically help regenerate the earth through consumer goods uh, which is a pretty big 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 goal but um, wow. um it's yeah which is which is another company which has done done pr pretty well through lockdown because of the nature of the products it produces yes. but um it was um that I was reading an article um, because of that organization um, that just said, look, why can't we get to a point where we kind of sustain, where we get to a good place, which is what happens in nature, where, you know, your environment your, your, the, and the biodiversity gets to a point where it just sustains. It's effective. Everything's working. It's growing. It's evolving slowly, but it sustains. And, and business doesn't do that. Business kind of says, no, we need to achieve more. We need to get further. And it is, it's the start of, I think, there's, there's there really needs to be a, a pioneering sort of spirit and, and, and driving force within the business community to, to focus on that and to champion that, to say, no, that continual perpetual growth is not as, um, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not great. Like we should be striving towards more sustainability to, to get to a point which is good, which delivers on everything that we've strived for, but ultimately comes back to that, what is success? What does it mean? Um, and having a kind of point where we say this is this is good, and I think that's where we're going as a company. We're trying to get 
our B Corporation uh, certified for, for Brilliant and the other the other company, um, which is making us really think about all of these things. And, and again, it all filters down to, you know, what are we what are we doing? Like, why are we doing this? And what's the right thing to do? So there's a lot of big questions and I kind of opened a can of worms with that um, side of things, but that's certainly where, where us as an organization are going. We're, we're going, yeah. well, where, where do we want to get to? What's the right level? Where, where can we make the biggest impact and, and achieve our vision? And then what does that mean when we get there? Yeah. Um, what, what do we do? Um, so yeah, so it's, that's, I think the, fu- the future of our company is very much focused around that, around how we can well, become do the best best we can for our environment as well as our people so. it, it, it's fascinating that you know again we, we meet people and, and what you just said absolutely bang on is if we don't have a win line how do we know we've won exactly and you, yeah. if we don't therefore we keep running you know it literally is you can see people keep running I, I, and i've worked with clients we've done what we call an alignment which is aligning the business goals, the personal goals of their owners, which is you know the primary, the initial purpose of a of a business that's owner managed, um, yeah. and you know we've done several times we've done it, and they're already there, and it was mm. just this look at the face. They've actually got everything they wanted. They just didn't realise the business was able to deliver that, and it was it was structured, and and and, and you know there's a few like that, and then there's a whole bunch of them that it is just a small few small tweaks, a little bit more here and there will give everything they want, and it's like yeah. that realization that. You know, I'm nearly yeah. there. It, it, yeah. It's it's a great thing to see. Um, yeah. But I, I, you know, and, and I, yeah, I, I, I do. I, fascinating to 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 to, to aid listen, listen to what you said and, and that whole idea of sustainability in business. I think is really key. Um, yeah. And and growing for its own sake is you know doesn't make sense to me, but growing for a reason does. And yes. I, I, I would suggest yeah. that great businesses need to grow to do great mm-hmm. things. Um, yeah. th- there are lots of average and poor businesses out there and, and perhaps like different trees yeah. some some will grow bigger some won't make it and yeah. maybe that's that's, that's I think that's it it's, it's it, I think you're, you're absolutely right I think it's dangerous for, for a business to, to not strive for growth um because ultimately everything else is, is is growing around you but I think it's kind of like growth in growth in different areas rather than just always the bottom line has to be kind of kind of a focus as well you know, i think um but yeah it's 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 a challenging one isn't it because by now <laughs> we live in a, in a in a capitalist society that focuses on that and gdpr is our fundamental measure of success as a country um it's, yeah. it's you know sadly it's the wrong measure of success Agreed. Um, i think you see a change there's now but um to focus on, on a bit on a, couple of different metrics which i'm not sure what they are but you know ultimately that's that's going to be um I think that's where the future is going to be. You know, that is where, where where we've all got to go, or else there won't be this uh, a future. Um, Agreed. So yeah, it's um, it's a, it's it, but it's a fascinating topic, and there's so much to go at. I think um, for all businesses, and there's so many changes that can be made, which are still growth and still movement forward. Um, yep. but it's, it's it's very exciting. You know. I agree. I think I, you know, I think there's a couple. What at least one Scandinavian country that does have a, a sort of happiness index. As, mm. as one of the key goals and I think you know I, I you know I think everything we've talked about just in that last segment is, is very relevant to that is why don't we just focus on being happy yeah we've got to we still got to feed ourselves and, and, and do things and, and therefore probably make money in some way but you know there are different and again I think that this mm-hmm. whole eight nine months and, and the next eight nine months maybe we'll think more of that and, and maybe hopefully that'll be a positive change yeah. uh, across the country so one last note, it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure. This has been uh, to, to, to list about everything that you've achieved and, 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 you. and your thoughts about the future. So the last question would be, what does the future look for, like for you and Brilliant? Yeah, um, yeah it's a good, good question. Um, and if it hadn't been for this year, I'd have a nice uh, business plan and uh, 21, <laughs> 22 company uh, goals statement for you and everything, but we don't have that because we've not done that because we're operating okay. quite differently now. Um, but what does um, <clears throat> what does the next uh, sort of year or so look like for us and Brilliant? Well, we want to. Um, con- I'm going to contradict everything I just said. Then we're still growing because we have a couple of goals that we're still trying to achieve. Yep. Um, so there is absolutely growth for us, but. As I mentioned before, we want to achieve our B Corporation certifi- certification, which is based around uh, sort of a, 
a lot of really valuable sort of metrics on how we operate the company and how um, we recruit, etc. The, the diversity and, and and making sure we, there's no sort of marginalised um, <clears throat> sort of ways of working to the, the could kind of do a disservice to the people around us or in our environment. So very much trying to achieve that, very much trying to achieve the financial goals that we've got, um, elevating the people uh, within the team, still um, getting more great people on board um, and, and just trying to empower um, the team to continue to do great work um, and do it in a way that's, that's positive for, for our, our clients, for them and for the customers who ultimately buy the products that we, we help promote. So I think it's going to be a period of, of realignment, focusing on what's right, just kind of doubling down and making sure that we get, we are a super effective and we're doing things in, in the best way, way possible, really. So it's, it's quite an ambiguous answer to your question and probably should be, no, you should have goals for this profit target and everything. And, and we do, but they're, they're kind of becoming secondary to how we operate as a company and, and, and how we make sure we focus on doing the right thing, I think now. So that's what the next next 12 months look like and making sure we can yeah help and support all, all the people that come into contact with Brilliant. I, thank you. No, I, I really appreciate that. I, I, I think yeah, goals and targets are useful to get us towards the point we want to get to. But for me, vision, values, purpose are more important, you know, that they lend themselves to the goals. So that the ultimate goal is something that isn't a number. Yeah. It's it's a situation. It's a visualized situation for us and our team and our clients. Um, yeah, it's sensible yeah. to have numbers on the way because that's the guide. But no, it, to be like your systems, I think we can let it be yeah. for a little while and then put the system in place once we've we've got clarity. Yeah, there. absolutely. Thank yeah. you so I much. Agree. I'd love to come back in uh, twelve months' time and see and see where you are and how, how you've got on with various things and. Um, we, uh, there might be a couple of people who'd be yeah. good to introduce you to, but really wish you all, all the best for the future. And um, thank you so much for spending the time and talking about your your, your company and and the, the yeah your future. Oh, pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you for the time, and I hope it's been been helpful, been, been useful for anyone who listens. It's been great for me. So, that's, <laughs> <laughs> so thank okay. you so much. Great. Brilliant. Fantastic.